Flowcharts are a powerful way to visualize workflows and organizational structures. They're really essential to planning and documenting systems of all kinds, especially Notion workspaces. But I'm really surprised to find that few tools offer the ability to generate flowcharts automatically from spreadsheets and other forms of structured information. And the few that do return really ugly results or lack customization. So when Notion added support for displaying flowcharts within code blocks, I created a simple template that generated the required code from a Notion database. And despite its lack of customization options, it remains one of the most popular resources on Notion VIP. So I created an updated version with far more sophistication and customization options. We'll walk through it here and you'll find the template linked for duplication within the video description and on the companion post on Notion VIP. And of course, it's available to all members of Notion A to Z. If you haven't yet joined us, I encourage you to do so so you can make the most of Notion. So I'll spare you the technicalities and share just the essentials of displaying flowcharts in code blocks. When you add a code block to a Notion page, you choose a programming language. And among the language options is Mermaid. Mermaid is a syntax for generating charts from text, including flowcharts. And after selecting Mermaid as the language, you can choose among three display options. The code option displays only the Mermaid code for editing. The preview option displays only the resulting flowchart. This is how you'll leave it when you're not making modifications to the chart. And then the split option displays both the code and the resulting flowchart so you can see the impact of your edits in real time. To demonstrate the new generator, we're going to recreate Wikipedia's classic flowchart example that shows the steps for handling a light that's not working. So on the main page of the template, you'll see a flowcharts database. And for each flowchart you create, you'll add an item to this database. So we'll do that and then title it Lamp Outage. And then we want to choose the flowchart template to populate the default property values in the inner contents of the page. With the orientation property, you can have your chart flow from top to bottom, which is the default, or you can change it to left to right. And then the font size property is the size of the text within the flowchart's nodes. And the default for that one is 16. So now we're ready to add the nodes to the flowchart. And the nodes are the labeled shapes that represent the flowchart's steps. Within the body of the flowchart items page, you'll see a linked database with two views, the first of which is nodes. And this nodes view links to a master nodes database, but it's filtered to show only the nodes related to this open flowchart. That's why it's empty when you create a new flowchart. So each item within this view represents a node of the flowchart. So to add a node, you add an item to the view. So let's talk through each property as we add the nodes for our lamp outage chart. I'll add an item, and then this first property is a number property called sort. And this is really for your own administrative needs. The view is sorted by this property, so you can keep your nodes in the same order they'll appear in the final flowchart. So we'll give the starting node a 1. And because it's the first node, it has no previous node or incoming links. We'll populate those for all the other nodes. And then the node text is the label that appears within the node, our starting label being lamp doesn't work. And we'll get to styling once all of our nodes have been added. So that's our starting node. And the next tests for a condition in the form of a question. It asks if the lamp is plugged in. So we'll add another item to our nodes view. And because it appears second in the flowchart, we'll give it a 2 within the sort property. Now the second node comes immediately after the first node. So within the previous node property, I'm going to choose the lamp doesn't work node. So this node text property, it's the title property of the database. And that's what you see when you're choosing a related item. And I've also made the sort property visible within this dropdown list so that you can be extra sure that you're choosing the right node. And then the text on incoming links typically represents a condition or an answer to a question. And because this node is the question, it has no incoming link text. And we'll keep the format of this incoming link as solid. We'll do that for all nodes in this example database, but switching any to dotted is easy. And then the node text is going to be the question itself. So I'll type lamp plugged in. And we'll add one more node together before jumping to styling. 
So each node after a question represents a possible outcome of the question. If the lamp is not plugged in, we'll offer a solution. If it is, then we'll try another question. So we'll add a third item to the nodes view and give it a sort value of three. And for the previous node, we'll choose the question asking if it's plugged in. And now because this is a conditional outcome of that question, it does have incoming link text. This will be the no scenario. So we'll type no into the incoming link text property and keep its format solid. And the solution for this no scenario is to plug in lamp. So I'll type that into the no text property. And then the fourth node will be the yes response to whether the lamp is plugged in. It'll ask another question and have its own yes and no conditions. And then all remaining nodes will use these same straightforward approaches. Now let's style these nodes. It's visually helpful and appealing to have a distinctive design for each type of node in your flowchart. In our lamp outage example, we can group the nodes into three different classifications. We have the starting node, we have nodes that test for conditions by asking questions. And then we have nodes that offer a solution for each condition. So we're going to create a style for each of those classifications. Beside the nodes view within each flowchart item, we have a view of styles. And like nodes, this links to a master database of styles. But unlike nodes, it displays all styles, not just those used by this current open flowchart. And that allows you to reuse nodes that you've already created and used in other flowcharts. So I have two of our styles already in place, the one for the starting node and another for questions. Let's create the solution style together. But before we do that, let me quickly explain hex color codes. They're a common method of representing RGB colors digitally. Each hex code is a six digit alphanumeric sequence preceded by a pound sign. So. My favorite color Carolina Blue, for example, uses the hex code pound 99BADD. You'll be using hex codes within your node styles, and to make it easy, I've included two resources on the main page of the template. The first one allows you to copy colors from Google's material design palette, and the other allows you to choose any color from the RGB model. So returning to our styles, we'll add an item, and when we do that, it's going to populate with the default values, including the template's name. So we want to replace that template name with a name that represents the type of node that will use the style. For this one, we'll use solution. For the shape, you'll choose from a drop-down list. We'll use stadium for our solution. And then we'll specify three different colors using the hex format. The first is the node's background color. So I'll go to the material design picker and choose green 500. And clicking it copies the hex code without the pound sign. So within the background color property, we'll type the pound sign and then paste the copied code. And I'm going to make the node's border the same color. So I'll copy the full hex code from the background property and paste it into the border color property. And white text will look nice with that green background. So in that property, I'll type the hex code for white, which is pound followed by six Fs. And by the way, when you add a new style, the text and border are both black by default. The hex code for black is pound followed by six zeros. So now we have all of our styles in place for our lamp outage flowchart. Let's return to our nodes view and within the style property for each node, we can choose a style from the styles database. Obviously the starting node will use the start style. So I'll click into the property and choose start. Now let's do our question nodes. The first of which asks if the lamp is plugged in. So for that one, I'll choose the conditional test style. And then I can easily copy the contents of that cell and paste it into the other question. So that just leaves our solution nodes. For the first one, I'll choose solution and then copy it and paste it into the others. And with our styles in place, our nodes are finalized and our flowchart code is ready. So below the page title, we can expand the properties to see a few that are hidden. That includes the final mermaid property. So if I hover over the generated code, I'll have a little copy icon that I can click to copy the mermaid code. And obviously you're going to want to see the flow chart and likely make tweaks before taking it to its final destination. So below the nodes and styles views, you'll see an empty code block and it's pre-configured to accept mermaid and display it in split view. So you can see the code and the resulting flow chart simultaneously. So if I click into that code block and paste the copied code, we can see our nicely recreated lamp 
outage flowchart. And once you've made any tweaks and have the final flowchart that you want, you can add a code block to the Notion page that will display it. You'll choose the mermaid language, paste the code, and then toggle the view to preview, which will display the rendered flowchart in its final form. Now the code that's generated, you can use it within any app that accepts the mermaid syntax. You can access Mermaid Live at mermaid.live, and I've included it among the resources on the main page of the flowchart template. And it renders the flowcharts a bit more nicely than Notion, and it also allows you to export the flowcharts as images. I'm so excited to see what you create with this supercharged flowchart builder. It's ready for everyone within Notion A to Z. And if you haven't yet joined us there, you'll find a link within the video's description.